Okay, in this video, we are going to talk about sinusoidal regression on the TI Inspire. We're going to run a regression and then use our regression equation to answer a couple of questions. We're gonna look at a spreadsheet, a, I don't know, a scatter plot. We're gonna run the regression, look at the graph, all kinds of stuff. So uh, let's take a look at the problem we're actually gonna deal with. Uh, so a marine scientist is monitoring water levels in a bay over a 20 hour, 24 hour period to understand the complete tidal cycle. Scientists measures uh, the water height every four hours to track both high and low tides, as well as the overall tidal pattern throughout the day. The data is collected in the table below. And then you can see we have this table. It's got times um, with a value of t. So 12 a.m. is t equals zero. And then like, uh, I don't know, 4 p.m. is t equals 16, etc. Then we have our water heights, and those are in meters. So uh, the first thing that we're going to do is uh, we're going to answer part A. Uh, which is to use a sinusoidal regression to find a function that models the height of the water in the bay in meters as a function of time of day measured using those T values. Okay, so I'm going to switch over to the Inspire. I'm going to run through finding that regression equation. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to add in a uh, list and spreadsheet. So I'm going to press doc and option four for insert. And then uh, I want lists and spreadsheets. So we have this. All right, so uh, in column A, I'm gonna put in the T value. So I'm actually just gonna type them. I mean, you, you can do this in a more clever way using like a sequence, but not really necessary. So we're typing them all in uh, and we got that. Okay, so 24, 20, 16, 12, eight, four, zero. Okay, good. Now what we're gonna do in column B is we're gonna put in the water height in meters. So we'll just type these numbers, 1.2, Press enter, 2.1, press enter, 3.0. You don't really need the 0.0, but whatever. 2.5, 1.8, 1.0, and 1.2. Okay, so I think that's good. Now what I like to do is I go back up to the top and in this cell, so in C1, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press menu and I'm gonna go down to statistics. So that's option four, stat calculations. And what we want is sinusoidal regression. So I'm actually just gonna press up. You can just press down a lot, but I'm gonna press up until I get to C. You can also literally type the letter C and it will bounce to this. So sinusoidal regression, I'm gonna press enter. It's gonna ask us some questions. All right, first up, we need the X list. So all of my X values are actually in column A. So you can see it's telling you to do a, uh, a column, you need these brackets, right? So I'm gonna change this C into A. And then I'm gonna press tab. And now all my Y values are in B. So I'm gonna press the letter B. And then uh, if you do like control, and then I think it's, I think it's open. Yes, open parentheses. Control open parentheses gives you that. Um, it's going to save the equation in, for me, F1. If you already have things in like F1 through F8, it will store it in F9. I recommend you just start a new problem or a new document when you're doing this. Uh, regressions create an awful lot of variables. Uh, but this is what we have, so I'm just gonna press OK. Uh, there's like a bunch of other options that you just do not need to touch uh, for what we're doing. Uh, so it does say first result column will be D. Uh, but we'll just see that. So uh, at this point, after you've put in your X list and your Y list, you can just press enter or you can use a trackpad to get here. I'm just gonna press enter. Um, there we go. So we got a uh, title and that's sinusoidal regression. Uh, a regression equation. So here it's showing us that our regression equation will be of the form A times sine of B times X plus C and then plus D on the outside. So it's the quantity BX plus C. And then you can look through and see what A, B, C, and D are. And you can write your equation based on this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take those values and I'm going to uh, write this down. So uh, I'm gonna switch back, hand write that in. That's gonna be the answer to part A. And then we just wanna write all that down. Uh, so here we go. I've written it to four decimal places. I don't know, you just have to make a choice. Um, even with four decimal places, that's an awful lot. Okay, let's take a look at uh, the next part. So, use your model to predict the height of the water at 7 p.m., which is t equals 19. So I'm gonna switch over to the Inspire, uh, show you 
I guess two ways that you can do that. One of them is on the graph and one of them is just on a calculator page. Let's do that and then we will jot down the answer and then we will move on to the next part. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go into a graph page. So I'm gonna press doc, option four for insert, and I wanna insert a graph page. And you can see I'm already in F2. I'm in F2 because F1 is our regression equation. I'm gonna press up and there it is. So if you didn't handwrite it in already, you can scroll through this. Notice the Inspire is using all the decimals, which is definitely what you wanna do. You don't wanna round anything as you're doing this process. I'm gonna just press enter and it graphs it. What I should probably do, because this is only between zero and 24, is press menu, and then option four is window, and window settings, and I'm gonna change this zero to 24, because that's really all we need to see. So there's the graph of our regression equation. Um, what we need to do is use this to predict the height of the water at t equals 19. I'm gonna do that by using trace. So that's menu, and option five, graph trace. And now you can literally just type in the number that you want. So I'm gonna type one nine for 19 and we get this. So at 19, the height of the water is 1.1055 meters. So I'm gonna write that in. Um, but also another option is we could have inserted, so doc for a calculator page. Now when I press var, you're gonna see a lot of variables. Um, I just need F1. So regressions create a lot of variables and most of them we will never look at um, but i need uh, f1 and i can just type in 19 here if i want as well um, either approach is totally fine let's hand write this in and then let's look at uh, the next part and so we got uh, h of 19 is approximately 1.1055 meters again i went four decimal places uh, i mean if it's multiple choice just pick the correct option uh, all right, let's look at the next question. It is safe for a certain type of boat to leave the bay only when the water level exceeds two meters. Based on your model, on what time intervals in terms of T is it safe for this type of boat to exit the bay? All right, so let's go back to the Inspire and take a look at this on a graph page, I think. So what we wanna do here is figure out when the function is above two, basically. So what I'll do is I'm gonna go back to uh, my graph page. So you just click up here to go between the tabs. Uh, we have this, I'm gonna press uh, escape because you can see that I'm still in the graph trace and I don't want that. So escape, nice clean page. Uh, I need to know when this graph is above two. So I will press tab so that I can graph two. And we have this. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use intersection. So that's menu eight, one, four and we will click the first graph, click the second graph. We get 3.40729 is the first time we hit two, 14.8925 is the second time that we hit two. The times that we are above two are in between those. So I'm gonna take this, I'm just gonna hand write it in, and that will be our answer. Okay. And so from there, we'll just jot down our answer which is our safe times are 3.4073 is less than T is less than 14.8925. And those would be like T times, which would equate to hours. Uh, it's a lot of the day. All right, so um, that's how we can run a regression on the Inspire. You're definitely gonna have to do this in AP Precalculus. I hope this was helpful and good luck.